Hello everyone, welcome to Khan Academy's Daily Homeroom. For those of y'all who aren't familiar with the, what this is, uh, ever since we had the mass school closures uh, because of the COVID-19, all of us at Khan Academy is a not-for-profit with a mission of providing a free world-class education for anyone anywhere. Realized that it's our duty to do whatever we can to support students, parents, and teachers through this crisis. So obviously, over many years, we've been building resources in math and English and language arts and early learning, Khan Academy kids, you can see Cody Bear right behind me, uh, going all the way through high school level sciences and SAT prep. But we realized once the schools were going to get closed that people needed even more. So we've been doing webinars for parents and teachers uh, to understand how to structure things. We've been releasing schedules on what students, how they could structure their days based on different age groups. And we've been doing this live stream, this daily homeroom, so that we can feel connected in this time of social distancing. We do have a, a, a cool announcement. Uh, just over the, yesterday, we released what we're calling learning plans on Khan Academy, and I think you're going to see uh, some of the link. There you go. The link is right there. It's magical. Uh, there, I can get my, there you go. <laughs> Felipe is doing a better job. It's getting fancier every day. Uh, but if you go there, what you're going to see is we got a lot of feedback from uh, especially students and parents saying, all right, the schedules were useful. I understand that I could do maybe 40 minutes of math and take a break and do 40 minutes of reading, et cetera, et cetera. But over the course of the next two months or even five months as we go through summer, what are reasonable goals for me or for my child? How do I make sure that uh, me, either myself or my child is keeping up so that they're ready for next school year? So this is a week by week learning plan that sets goals for you if you're the student or your child if you're the parent. Uh, to be on track. And this first learning plan we've, we've done is focused on math. Khan Academy has much more than just math, but math is one of those core subject areas where it's really valuable to make sure that you don't fall behind. Obviously, even before this COVID crisis, we have talked a lot about the importance of mastery learning, about not being uh, pushed ahead while you still have gaps that accumulate over time, these Swiss cheese gaps, and that Khan Academy can help fill you in. And then you can imagine with five months of uh, not being in school now, it's that much more important to fill in those gaps and to keep learning. And just to underline that, our partners at the NWEA, they're a nonprofit assessment body, they just released uh, a report yesterday because they have historical data on what's known as the summer learning loss or the summer slide. Normally you have three months of loss over the summer, not just not learning, but oftentimes forgetting. Now it might be five months. And in that world, it could be as much as a year of learning loss. So please take a, a look at those learning plans and give us feedback. Uh, the other thing I'd like to just set a, a, a shout out, a thank you, uh, Khan Academy, we are not for profit. We are funded by philanthropic donations. You own as much as Khan Academy as I or anyone else. It has no ownership. It's a public charity. And we need your support. Even before the crisis, we were running at a deficit. And now our server costs, et cetera, are going up many fold. Uh, and we're trying to put out more support. So if you're in a position to do so, please think about donating. I do want to give a special thanks to several corporations who've stepped up recently, including Bank of America, AT&T, Google.org, and Novartis. Uh, that's been a major help, but we need more. We're still running at a, at a deficit to do all of this. So with that, uh, today's uh, uh, live stream, I thought we, we could have a little bit of fun. We have fun all the time, uh, but we're, we're gonna keep it a little bit free form. If you're watching this over YouTube or you're watching it over Facebook, put any question you might possibly be curious about there. We have team members uh, that are looking at them and everything is fair game. Dan, Dan is here and he's gonna help me out uh, identifying what folks are saying. But you, you know, we can, we're can. we more than happy to answer questions about some of what I just talked about. How do you structure your day? Um, questions about learning and education. We're happy to, to at least think about uh, questions about some of the, the health care stuff that's going on as much as we are, are qualified to do so, uh, economic things, or just other things that are going on in your life. Uh, this, we're going we're gonna, to, in, inside of our organization, we have these things called Ask Me Anything. We're going to make this an Ask Me Anything version of our live stream. So ask us literally anything. And let's see, I'm going to see some of our team members are starting to put out. So Susanna from YouTube Susanna Garcia Dominguez. And Susanna, you've been asking good questions uh, on, on this live stream. I remember your name off of YouTube as asking, will you be releasing a learning plan for first grade? So that is an excellent question. Uh, so that your question by itself is a little bit of a push for us to do it. First grade is an interesting 
overlap uh, subject or grade level for us because Khan Academy Kids goes up through first grade and then the uh, Khan Academy that is not Khan Academy Kids, we have to come up with a better name for that because uh, that's still for kids uh, and adults. It, it starts at that kindergarten first grade level. So I think what well, your question is a really good push. Hopefully over the next couple of days or weeks, we can work with the Khan Academy Kids team to maybe put something together or put something together that's a hybrid of Khan Academy kids and uh, the, the math, because these first learning plans are math focused on, on non Khan Academy kids, Khan Academy. <laughs> All right, from Facebook, Jackie Requelmi says, could you please share what software you use to record video lessons? I would love to use the writing tool to explain in better details with video for my students. Thank you so much. Uh, so Jackie, it sounds like you might be a, a, a teacher, and I know a lot of teachers even before this crisis were interested in making, I guess you could say Khan Academy style videos, and especially with school closures, it's even more important. So what I use, and it's good that I'm, that it's right here. So let me see if I can show this to you. I'm picking it up, there's a little bit of, I'm bumping into all sorts of stuff. This is a Wacom tablet I use. This is a, I've upgraded over the years. I used to have a, kind of a smaller $80 one. I think this one costs about $200. And it will come with a pen that looks like this. And so uh, that's what I use to write uh, when I'm doing it. This microphone that you see here, this is the microphone that I use. And once again, all of this is kind of upgrade. Uh, you don't need these types of things to, to do a, a decent video. If you just have even, you know, your regular headphone microphone that's probably sufficient to the first several years of Khan Academy I had a $80 tablet and I just used a standard you know like $20 headset that you could find and the I use an art program in the early days I was using uh, Microsoft Paint uh, now I use Sketchbook uh, Sketchbook Pro uh, which is just a nice drawing application and the way that I capture the drawing and uh, my voice is I use Camtasia to screen capture. And Camtasia isn't the only tool. There's other tools uh, that can allow you to do some screen capture. And I just, uh, what I do is I capture a portion. I do a 1280 by 720 pixel rectangle of my art tool. And that's why you don't see all of the widgets and the tools because they're, out, they're outside of the recording window. Uh, so that's what I do. I just, uh, I, I click record. Uh, I, I try to do things fairly informally. I think it's really valuable when you're making videos that it's not overly scripted uh, because I think the, the listener can detect if, if you are going through it with them or not. So I try to keep it reasonably extemporaneous and, and, and low key, uh, but whatever works for you. But uh, I encourage you to definitely uh, keep going with that. All right. So from Facebook, Rick Cornett asks, how can I set up a science curriculum for my sixth and seventh grader? Math is set up by grade level, but science is not. Uh, that's a great question, Rick. So Khan Academy, we don't yet, it is our aspirations, we don't yet have an explicit science curriculum for middle school students. With that said, and I've said this a couple of times on the live stream, I think a sixth grader, a seventh grader is ready to start engaging on parts of the high school sciences. So for example, high school biology, which is on Khan Academy, I am confident that your children, especially if you're there to support them, can start learning the basics of, of biology. Uh, and frankly, it's very relevant right now to learn about DNA, RNA, viruses, bacteria, uh, evolution, natural selection. Obviously, you know, with the viruses, evolution and natural selection is happening before our eyes in real time. Uh, so I would definitely look at the high school biology as a great thing for potentially sixth or seventh graders. They definitely have the math background for it. And then even the early units in chemistry where you're learning about the periodic table of elements, uh, what elements are, the basics of bonding, the basics of balancing chemical equations. There's nothing there that's cognitively beyond a sixth or seventh grader, especially if they have some supports. And physics is a little bit more mathematical, but there's even elements of the physics uh, where, you know, maybe the one dimensional um, motion or Newton's laws uh, could be a really interesting thing to tackle. And if you're, if you're, students or your children are able to do that now, they're going to have a serious leg up uh, when they get to true high school uh, level science. So let's see, we have another question here. While when I picked up my tablet, everything got messed up. I'm <laughs> so, let's see. So from Facebook, S. Wayne Smith says, will you consider Khan Academy project based learning activities? Great question. So this is something we've always thought about doing. And, and, and back in the day, we've actually did release a few uh, pieces of content on it. 
Uh, but I think the lens you're asking is, is while schools are closed or as we go into the summer, maybe in these learning plans, we can articulate things to do above and beyond the traditional academic uh, skill development or the stuff that could reinforce that. So I think that's a great idea. Uh, this is if, if our team or maybe we can partner with some folks who can maybe supplement the learning plans and the schedules with that type of resource. Uh, I think it would be cool. And it, it's just a matter of our uh, capability and our bandwidth. But I, I definitely think there's there's value in that. So so I have a question for you. This is asked almost every single live stream that we do. Um, it, it's a question on how did you start Khan Academy? And uh, probably more importantly, people don't know about this part, which is who did you go to for help? Who did I go to help when I started Khan Academy or like when I needed help when I was a kid? Uh, who did you go to when you started for help when you started Khan Academy? Oh yeah, so for those of y'all who don't know, and uh, you can probably do a YouTube search and find videos of me giving a long-winded explanation of, of how Khan Academy started. I, I've, I've been running off of that story for a long time, uh, but, it, but it, it still there's a lot of folks who still don't uh, maybe know that story as much. So back in 2004, I, was, uh, I had just gotten married. I was, my original background was in uh, technology and in math, uh, but I had gone to business school and I was now working in, as an investment analyst of all things. And uh, it just came out of conversation after my wedding. Uh, my 12-year-old cousin Nadia at the time was visiting, and she was having trouble in math. And so I said, Nadia, I am confident that you can master mathematics. How about when you go back to New Orleans, which is also where I was born, um, I'm willing to tutor you remotely. I was living in Boston at the time. And she agreed. And uh, along, and she's probably like a lot of you students listening. She was 12 years old. She 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 wanted to learn, but she for some you know for many reasons she had accumulated gaps in her knowledge and had convinced herself that maybe she wasn't quote good at math. Uh, many of you know many of you parents might relate. Her mom Nazrathanti, you know, she was saying, yeah, I'm worried about Nadia. She's losing her her confidence here. And so those tutoring sessions, I was doing it remotely. I think a lot of you teachers are finding yourselves in that kind of a circumstance now because of of the closures. Um, and I was getting on the phone. I, we didn't have things like Zoom and Hangouts and live streams back then, uh, but I was trying to find ways that we could see each other's writing and, and things like that. But, but slowly but surely, Nadia was able to catch up with her class. It was actually unit conversion that she was having trouble with. Uh, then she actually got a little bit ahead of her class. Then I became what I call a tiger cousin, and I called up her school. And I said, you know, I really think Nadia Rehman should retake that placement test from last year that put her in, in that current math track. And, you know, they famously said, who are you? And I said, I'm her cousin. And uh, they let her surprisingly take that test. And uh, that same Nadia who thought she wasn't good at math only a few months before was then put into an advanced class. And that same Nadia who thought that she couldn't understand unit conversion when she was 12, by the time she was 13, she was taking college level classes at the University of New Orleans. And I tell you that story only partially to show off on behalf of my cousin, uh, but more to, to tell many of you parents and many of you students out there that are thinking that you are not good at something, it has nothing to do with your innate ability. Those, the subject matter is not fundamentally difficult. It's likely because you have gaps. And that's where Khan Academy hopefully has your back. And you know, the silver lining of, of what we're going through right now over the next two months and probably the next five months is this is a great opportunity to leverage Khan Academy to fill in those gaps. We had Tim Vanderberg on a couple of days ago, amazing teacher out of Hesperian, California, who makes all of his sixth graders start Khan Academy at the very basic, starting with the arithmetic uh, course, which starts literally at one plus one. But if you know that material, you go through it really fast. But that's the way he ensures that his kids don't have gaps. And he has a student population that you know starts the year at 90 percent, is well below grade level. And then he finishes the year where they're able to fill in their gaps. And most of them are accelerated or are able to move ahead. So anyway, going back to the story, uh, I was kind of hooked. Uh, I started tutoring Nadia's younger brothers as well. Then word gets around my family that free tutoring is going on. And I found myself <laughs> tutoring 10, 15 cousins, family, friends around the country. And Khan Academy, you know, I had this background in, in software engineering. And I said, well, uh, there, there aren't good resources for, for my cousins to get practice and immediate feedback. Uh, what if I could make some of that and, and also provide a dashboard for me as their coach or their teacher or their tutor so that I could understand where their gaps were so that I could dig a little bit deeper and assign appropriate work for them, etc. And that was the first Khan Academy. Had nothing to do with videos, which many people associate it with. And uh, it was in 2006, I was showing off uh, this software to a friend at a dinner party. As you can imagine, I'm a very fun dinner party guest. 
<laughs> and he said, Sal, this is all cool, but how are you scaling your actual lessons up? And I said, told him, his name is Zuli Ramzan, I have to give him full credit. Uh, I said, Zuli, it's hard to scale my lessons. I feel like I'm repeating the same thing. I'm answering the same question oftentimes over and over. And he said, well, why don't you record some of your lessons as YouTube videos and, and upload them for your, for your cousins? And I initially thought it was a horrible idea. I said, no, YouTube is for cats playing piano. Uh, but I got home, I went home that weekend, got over the idea that it wasn't my idea and I gave it a shot. And then that took on a life of its own. And, you know, I, I could go more in depth, but by 2009, I just had Frank, you know, this was about three, four years into this cousin project, five years into it. I had trouble focusing on my day job. There were about 100,000 people who were using it every month. And I said, surely if I set this up as a not-for-profit, philanthropists will donate to this because the, the impact we could have on the world is, is, is huge. Uh, if we translate into the language of the world, go across subjects and grades. And, you know, whenever you try anything, start anything <laughs> entrepreneurial, you have to start with that delusional optimism uh, that surely the world will conspire to make this happen. And you usually realize quite quickly that it was a little bit delusional. Uh, but after about eight, nine months of living off of savings and openly, it was probably the mo one of the most stressful times in my life. I you know, had given up a good career and my first uh, child had just been born. Uh, but after about 10 months, all of a sudden, some, some philanthropists started to come out of the woodwork. And uh, by 2010, we were able to become a, a real organization. So anyway, uh, you got me on my soapbox telling the origin story of Khan Academy, but I'm happy to answer any other questions you have on that front as well. Sal, there's so, actually a follow-up to that. Um, oh yeah, so on YouTube. Good. Yeah, on YouTube, Sophia says, great, where is Nadia now? Um, and she also has a sister called Nadia. Oh, very good. So Nadia is now, if I'm doing the math correctly, she is 28 years old. Uh, she lives in New York. I was just Zoom conference calling with her and her family a couple of nights ago. Obviously, everyone's worried about the situation, especially in New York. Uh, but she is uh, doing a, a master's and uh, hopefully a PhD as well in clinical psychology. She wants to uh, become a kind of a, a clinical psychologist, therapist uh, type type person. Uh, so she she's we're very proud of her. She she is doing well. Although I, I often joke with her that there's a lot riding on her success. <laughs> that if that if that early, early intervention, you know, if Nadia ends up anyway. Uh, she, yeah, she she's she's on track. And Sal, um, Facebook uh, Scott Yang on Facebook asks, why is there a giant bear behind you? I, I don't think everyone knows who Cody is. There's a giant bear behind me. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. There's a giant bear behind. <laughs> <laughs> no, I so so my my mom has actually kept saying she's like, you know, I like these live streams, but your background is really horrible. Uh, like you have some like random junk behind you. <laughs> you have to fix your background. And so uh, I actually went looking this morning, I right before this, uh, I, I was actually on on CNN. And my mom's like, if you're gonna be on CNN, you got to get a good background, Sal. And I, <laughs> I just started digging around for what we have that can make a decent background. And this is what I found. And for those of you who don't know, this is um, Co Cody Bear gazing over my shoulder. He's kind of the primary character in Khan Academy Kids. Uh, so this is uh, a reminder uh, to uh, that that's available for you, and uh, and and yeah, and maybe you know having Cody glare at you will be a reminder to to keep learning. So let's see. Uh, I, I, there's a bunch of questions I'm seeing here, Dan, but feel free to jump in with more. I see YouTube. R of Jane says, "What do I do when my brain gets stressed in reading or math?" So uh, there, there's there's a lot to unpack what what that might what that might be, you know. One thing that I've talked a lot about in this live stream and other places is just the value of meditation. And meditation, it does not have to be something fancy. It literally can be, you know, before you embark on something, give yourself two minutes and just sit there and you know close your eyes if it's useful, soften your gaze, and just try to just uh, try to observe your thoughts. And what you find is the more you do it uh, and the more consistently you do it, you start to realize that you aren't your thoughts, uh, that you can observe your thoughts. And the more that you can observe your thoughts, the less that they, the less overwhelming that they can become. And, you know, I, I think we've all felt some of what you might be feeling, Arav, which is, you know, you're reading something and you're like, wait, wait, did I understand that properly? And you keep rereading that same sentence. I've, I used to do that a lot. Uh, I think in math, 
you know, you're in a test or something, or you're doing a problem and you're like, you know, there's a process in your brain that's saying, oh, well, you know how to do it. This is hard. What if you don't know how to get this answer right? You might fail your math class. And, 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 and then that becomes a little bit debilitating because it doesn't allow your, your brain to enter into kind of a state of flow. So that's one tip I have is, you know, just meditation. Actually, physical exercise can be really good. There is some evidence, actually a lot of evidence, that just getting that brain flowing, running, etc., it releases those endorphins. And then when you, go, when you sit down to do something like reading or, or math or anything that you might find stressful in your life, and you just realize that, oh, you know, I'm just going to do it, see what happens. Uh, so I think the more that you just give yourself permission to just be, be in the moment, don't try to think too much about what's happened in the past or what might happen in the future, but just like, oh, this is fun. I'm here. I'm this sentient being in the universe that is going to read this entertaining book or uh, that gets to uh, puzzle through these interesting math questions. I think you have that attitude and um, it, 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 it can really help. Uh, you know, I, I, I've considered myself lucky that, you know, throughout my life, I've, I've always kind of taken a a fun attitude, a kind of an adventurous attitude whenever I, I, I see a test or something. And I, I think it's really helped me is like, oh, this is fun. It's a bunch of puzzles. And I don't try to think too much about uh, what the outcomes might be because that, that can be a little bit stressful sometimes. How, Sal, that was wonderful. We have a related question from Selena Cheng on YouTube. Hi, Sal. How can I find a passion project to pursue while in high school? Great question, Selena. So uh, meditation might help there. <laughs> you, might, you, know, you might sit under the, the, uh, a tree for a little while and, 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 have, a, and have an enlightenment experience. Or um, what I would do is just really reflect, like, you know, keep a lookout in the world for where are there problems to be solved? And this crisis we're in is highlighting a lot of problems that have always existed and they're introducing a set of new ones. I've talked at this live stream. I think there's many opportunities for service projects right now. It could be uh, uh, figuring out safe ways to get groceries for, say, elderly people in your community, uh, ways to get food. Uh, you know, we're going through a financial situation where a lot of people have lost their jobs. And I never thought it would be this way in the United States, but there could be, there's, there's people probably not too far from where you live who are worried about where their next meal is going to come from. So are there ways to coordinate, you know, just dropping off the basics to folks, get milk, eggs, bread, things like that. Are there ways to uh, help with some of the social dis isolation people are feeling? Uh, you, you know, I, my mom, she's living by herself in New Orleans and, uh, you know, and she's the age population that's high risk for COVID. So she, and she's watching the news all day and she's getting stressed. So I've been telling, you know, it's always important for me to keep in touch with my mom, but even more like for her mental health, it's super important for me to, to keep connected and that she can see my kids and that she doesn't feel isolated. But there's a lot of people in her situation who might be a little bit older, who are alone at home, who might not have someone who is checking in with them on them on a daily basis. Maybe there's, maybe there's opportunities around that. If you're more inclined on the invention side of things, you know, uh, are there gloves you can create that uh, not only protect you, but disinfect things as you touch them? You know, you can imagine a glove that, you know, has made some material or it's doused in some material that uh, when you, when you, when you use it, not only does it protect you, but it protects other people as well. I mean, you, you, you can keep imagining more and more uh, things uh, uh, that, that could help solve a lot of problems uh, for the world right now, or could have solved problems that existed even before. But I would just reflect on that. And then when you feel some energy around something, just run with it. And as I've talked about in other live streams, there's an opportunity here. The silver lining is a lot of the things that historically keep young people super busy with, you know, hours of homework every night and, and this practice and that practice, a lot of that's gone now. And so you have more time to be able to dig deep into something. You know, if it's coding, there's resources on Khan Academy I and mean, people talk about project-based learning. That is one area where Khan Academy has what I would describe as project-based learning to be able to code and create things. You can make apps to solve interesting problems. Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, the world's your oyster right now. It's a, it's a great opportunity to do, to do that type of thing. But make sure it's something that appeals to you. You're not trying to do it for other people. You're not saying, oh, how will this look on a college application? Do it because it's authentically something you're interested in. And by the way, if you do that, it actually will look good on a college application because <laughs> it'll be truly you and it'll be authentic. So there are questions, let's see, from Facebook. Sandra Edwards asks, so much has changed over the past month. What positive changes have you noticed coinciding with more people being online? Well, 
you know, it, it's hard to talk about too many positive things in, because it, it's a tough, tough period right now. Some of the positive things I've seen, and this transcends Khan Academy, is, you know, what I just talked about, uh, this crisis has made me realize that I have to stay connected with more of my friends and family, many of whom I might have not talking, t spoken to for a while. So I'm making sure that I'm calling up cousins and uncles and friends from high school. So in a strange way, the social distancing is making us think beyond just the people that we normally see on a day to day basis. So that might be a silver lining that we're connecting with a lot more people. I think this crisis reminds us of what's really important. Uh, all of us get caught up in the day to day. If you're a student, you're like, oh, I got that assignment due, I got that homework, am I going to the SAT, college, what's my career choice? But if you think about it, that's, those are important things. And obviously, you know, us adults, we're always thinking about, oh, you know, that project I'm working on or uh, that next goal or, or that next event or whatever it might be. And all of those things are important, but they're not the most important thing. The most important thing is your health, your mental health your connections, your support networks. And I think it's times like this when you realize just how fragile we are, uh, how fragile in some certain ways society can be, uh, that it refocuses you on, on, on you know, the really important things, the things that really fulfill us as human beings versus these hoops that we keep jumping through our whole lives. And maybe when we're older, we realize, why did we jump through so many hoops? Why didn't I spend more time with my uh, parents while they were alive? Why didn't I connect with those cousins when I had a chance, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that is bringing that, you know, we're spending more time with family, that's positive. On the education side of things, the, you know, this is a very suboptimal situation, but the silver lining is some of these techniques that are having to happen where students are having to build a little bit more independence, a little bit more agency, uh, and they're still supported by parents and teachers, that skill is actually a super valuable skill. It's more valuable than, you know, knowing how to factor a polynomial is to be, is learning how to learn. And so I'm hoping for the students who are able to build that muscle, hopefully many of y'all are listening right now, that's going to pay dividends if you can keep applying it in the summer and keep applying it your whole life. Uh, because it's not like, you know, the, the days of going to K through 12 and then going to college and then just having skills that you will use the rest of your life until you retire, those days are over. You're going to have to be a lifelong learner. And so it's a great time to, to kind of take that agency uh, on, your, uh, on your own. Uh, so, so that that could be a, a silver lining as well. But obviously, you know, if I were to list a lot of the the suboptimal things right now, <laughs> the list would get long. But a good question to focus on on the silver linings. So let's see. There's a question from Facebook. Saif Siddiqui asks, "Can you please add subjects of commerce as per Indian curriculum, please?" So, uh, Saif, that's actually a subject close to my heart. As I described my my career before Khan Academy. Uh, was I was a financial analyst. And so uh, we, we actually do have, it's not mapped to the Indian curriculum, but I will say if you want the intuition of finance and accounting, Khan Academy does have some resources for you already. Uh, so uh, feel free to look at that content. I made a lot of that actually when I was a financial analyst and I saw that uh, you know, even some of the junior analysts that we were hiring who went to fancy colleges with 4.0 GPAs, when I asked them very basic questions uh, like, Okay, there's two identical houses. The rent on one house is X. The other house costs Y to buy. Which one should I buy, rent or buy? And they say, oh, I'd buy Y. I'd buy the second house. And they're like, okay, now that price is doubled on the second house while the rent is the same on the first house. Now which one? And they're like, oh, you're right. And, and so we try to give those types of frameworks of how you can think uh, how, how very co seemingly complex situations in the economy or finance could be broken down into a fairly simple and intuitive framework. So uh, definitely check some of that content out. And I hope in the future we can do something like a, a more formal finance accounting capital markets type course on, on Khan Academy. And we actually have a lot of personal finance content. Uh, it's a partnership with Bank of America around better money habits. Uh, we also have some career content around that. So check that content out as well. So let's see. There is a question, YouTube Explorer questioner. Oh, this is a, oh it's, a, it's a testimonial. Well, that's nice. Uh, you're saying uh, you're amazing, Sal. You're being generous. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to better myself and make myself useful and find more purpose in my life. Uh, well, uh, Explorer questioner on YouTube. That's why all of us here at Khan Academy, to be clear, Khan Academy is much more than me, and much more than me and Dan. <laughs> There's 200 plus other folks uh, uh, who, are, who are doing a lot of work and thousands of people. But that's why we want to dedicate our lives to this mission, because at, at, you know, at the end, uh, if we can empower 
millions of folks, that's going to have a multiplier, billions of folks, that's going to have a multiplier effect uh, for the world. You know, I, I'd sometimes daydream that, you know, the, the person who one day can find the vaccine for the next pandemic or solves an energy crisis or brokers peace between nations, you know, in, 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 in not too far off future says, yes, and I'm in this position because I was able to get my start or with some help from, from Khan Academy. So it really uh, is motivating for us to, to hear those, those types of things. So from YouTube, Quality Material asks, firstly, Mr. Sal, how are you dealing with the quarantine? Hope you're doing well. So uh, Quality Material, uh, Mr. Material, maybe I should call you. Uh, uh, thanks for asking. I I'm doing fine. You know, obviously, uh, this is a challenging time for everyone. But I remind myself, uh, this is the whole world is going through this. And relatively speaking, I find myself in a very fortunate situation. Uh, you know, uh, knock on wood, have my health, uh, my family does, we are, um, you know, we, we, we have a backyard, we have a park nearby that we can uh, go to, staying socially distanced uh, appropriately, you know, my, my kids are, I'm really enjoying time with my kids, uh, you know, it was hard at first uh, trying to do work and at the same time they're screaming in the, in the next room, but uh, we've kind of got a new normal now and, and that's once, once again, it's reminded me like, you know, sometimes when you're doing work and, and your child is screaming or saying, Dada, 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 let me show you the thing I made, you're kind of like, oh, wait, wait, go away for a second. I need to finish this really important email. Uh, but there's something about this crisis that makes you say, well, maybe this email isn't as important as you know, hanging out with my eight-year-old or, or whatever. So uh, I've actually enjoyed it to kind of recenter myself in a lot of ways. I think my wife and I, you know, we were just talking yesterday about, you know, uh, uh, having all of the various um, events or social things or things you have to go to travel all get canceled um, and just us being home and having quality time and um, it's it's kind of nice so I, I i i consider myself very fortunate obviously i have a job uh, where uh, not only do i have a job now a lot of people who are working in restaurants and other you know they're losing their jobs now so uh, for those of us who are able to keep working and keep having an income incredibly fortunate and I and I consider myself fortunate that uh, we have a role to play to help in, in this situation on the on the education dimension and, and getting information out dimension so uh, thanks for asking uh, but I, I consider myself very very lucky um, and I hope you're doing well as well mr. material so uh, we are almost out we actually are out of time I've, I'm maybe having too much fun but uh, we're, we're here every day uh, and, and we're gonna do more of these just super open-ended ask me anything uh, really enjoying the questions uh, and uh, all I'll say is thanks for joining hope everyone has a really really good weekend and I'll just remind folks if you're in a position to do so we are a not-for-profit we are running at a deficit and every donation matters uh, so anything you could do to help uh, support Khan Academy would would mean a lot uh, thank you and, and stay safe and healthy